Hey, it's Thomas DeLauer, and I want to give you the three fish that you should avoid at all costs. Because right now, there's a few fish that are out on the market that can definitely be holding you back, keeping you from reaching your goals, and keeping you from feeling your best. Now, in addition to that, I don't want to just have a negative video, so I'm going to give you the three fish that I think you should eat. The three fish that I think you are safe to consume a lot of to not only get your requirements of protein, but to also be able to reduce your overall amounts of mercury and heavy metals within your bloodstream. Okay, so when I determine what kind of fish that I eat, I look at three different factors. The first one that I look at is contamination, and I'm going to talk about that in some more detail here in just a second. I want to make sure that you stick with me through the end of the video because I'm going to explain all the details as we go. The second one that I generally focus on are the overall health benefits of the fish that you're actually eating. So we look at the contamination levels for fish to avoid, then we look at the actual health benefits for fish that we want to eat, and then the third thing that I look at is the overall sustainability. Is it sustainably fished? I mean, that's a moral and ethical thing, to be completely honest, because if we overfish, then we could be out of some of these good, healthy fish in the next five or six years, and it's really that imminent. So let's talk about these factors. Okay, the first one being contamination. Mainly, I'm talking about mercury and lead. Okay, you hear about this all the time, hear about these heavy metals that are getting into our food supply, getting into our fish supply. Well, how exactly does it work? Okay, so really since this big industrial revolution, especially within the last 20, 30 years, we've been having a lot of heavy metals getting into our water supply, whether it's going to be the rivers, lakes, streams, but most of all, it's going into our ocean supply. And what happens is when we have heavy amounts of mercury within our system, it causes some serious central nervous system issues. Okay, I'm not just talking like little mild things. Actual mercury poisoning can make you feel like total garbage. It can make it so your muscles don't contract well. If maybe you're wondering like you're feeling weak, a lot weaker lately, you're not able to get the pump, you're not able to really feel like you're working out, it could be something to do with mercury. Now additionally, it takes like 12 to 18 months for mercury to clear out of your system. So even when you start a detox regimen to try to get the mercury out, it's staying with you for quite a while. And the people that are at the most risk with this are going to be pregnant women. Because obviously when mercury stays in the system for that long, it can affect you throughout the entire gestation period and it can actually cause offspring to actually deal with the same kind of issues that the adult is dealing with when it comes to the central nervous system. It can actually cause some issues from a developmental standpoint, meaning it can affect how your brain actually develops and how you actually think later on down the line. Okay, so the fish that generally have high amounts of mercury are usually the larger predatory fish simply because they have a longer life expectancy. They're in the water for a long period of time. They're absorbing a lot of these nutrients. They're usually more dense. We're talking about shark, we're talking about tuna, talking about swordfish, where they actually absorb more of these heavy metals and hold on to them for a longer amount of time, increasing the overall density of those metals within the actual flesh of the fish. Okay, now the next thing we wanna look at are industrial chemical toxins. I'm talking about DDT, I'm talking about diotoxins, I'm talking about PCBs. These are all byproducts of regular everyday factories. And a lot of times, again, these leak into the streams, these leak into the rivers, and they ultimately end up in the oceans. Well, because they are heavier, they are a higher density than water, they end up floating down to the bottom. The ones that these usually affect are gonna be fish like eels, like sea trout, like sea bass, the fish that are usually loitering around at the bottom. Okay, now these kinds of chemicals can literally take five to eight years to clear out of your body, also causing huge central nervous system issues. Very similar to nerve gas. It can actually do that on a very small scale. So we wanna be very cognizant of the kind of fish that we're taking in there. Okay, then lastly, of course, we look at sustainability. Now the reason that I look at sustainability is because not just moral and ethical reasons and trying to save the planet, it's beyond that. You see, when we overfish, a lot of times what can end up happening is these overall species end up dying off. And then if they don't die off all the way, a lot of times there can be genetic mutations and they end up not becoming the same fish they were 10, 15 years ago, and they may not be as good for us as they are now. Okay, so let me give you the three fish that you absolutely should eat. And I'm gonna tell you, two of them are total surprises. The first fish I wanna talk about is going to be wild caught salmon. Something I'm always touting, no surprise there. You probably were expecting me to say this. Super high in those omega-3 fatty acids that you need to reduce inflammation, super high in selenium, super high in B12, but additionally, it's very, very low in the heavy metals. It's a softer tissued fish, so it doesn't absorb a lot of those heavy metals. Now, the thing is, you wanna make sure that it is wild caught. Now, a lot of times we come into an issue because it's not always in season. When it's not in season, we're usually getting it frozen. Well, I will tell you, if you get wild caught salmon that's frozen, it is perfectly 100% fine. Okay, a lot of times they're flash frozen. A lot of times they're frozen shortly after being caught. They actually preserve a lot of the nutrients, so you're totally okay there. The second fish on my list 
going to be sardines. Okay, definitely not one that you were expecting. Those funny little fish that are in the can that actually taste pretty darn good when you get past the fact that they're coming out of a can. Okay, sardines, extremely, extremely low in heavy metals. Extremely, extremely high in omega-3s that you need, but also very high in selenium, which is super good for your thyroid, but also, and even better, they are very high in copper. And if you've seen my video talking about collagen, you know that copper is needed to synthesize collagen and to actually utilize it within the body. So you've got joint issues, you've got gut issues, you're trying to heal that, sardines might be one of the tricks for you. And don't quibble over the fact that they're still in a can. Right now, a lot of the canned goods are starting to get rid of the BPAs, starting to be a lot more conscious of the things that we're putting in the cans. And especially when we look at canned foods that are suspended in oil, a lot less of a chance of the toxins coming in from the metal getting into the food. Now the next one I'm talking about isn't even a fish at all. I'm talking about mussels. I'm talking about those simple little clam-like things that you see all over the place that are kind of orangey looking or kind of weird. Okay, if you're someone that's trying to get a good amount of protein, mussels are going to be one of the best choices that you can get. They are one of the most potent gram for gram foods to actually get protein out of. And in addition to that, super high in omega-3s, super, super high in selenium, and honestly, one of the best sources of overall trace minerals you can possibly get. Now for the scary part. What the heck do you want to avoid? I've given you the three fish that you need to eat, but now I want to give you the scary ones. Okay, the first one, shark. Super predatory fish. Big fish that's swimming around eating other predatory fish that already have high amounts of mercury in them. Okay, so you've got a shark swimming around that's eating tuna that's already high in mercury. Boom, it's just compounding the fact. The other thing to consider is with sharks, their gestation period is very, very long. Now what happens with this is it means that they're not sustainably fished. If someone catches a shark, the likelihood of it being pregnant is actually quite high given the length of term. So this means that we have a much higher chance of wiping out species of shark. Okay, now we think about it and we go, okay, sharks are big, mean, and scary. What do we care if we wipe them out? Well, at the end of the day, that throws off the entire sea food chain, which throws off all the healthy fish that we want to eat. So I would honestly recommend just staying away from shark in the first place. Okay, the next one we wanna look at is gonna be tuna. Now I'm not opposed to all tuna, but most tuna is very, very dense, very dense meat. Now, if you're going to choose a form of tuna, the best one that you can choose is going to be a US yellowfin. Okay, it's the healthiest kind. It's also in an area of the world that usually doesn't have as much in the way of the heavy metals. Okay, so yellowfin is good to go. Now, if you're looking at canned tuna, stay away from the albacore. That density in the albacore makes it so that it's super high in those heavy metals. If you go with the regular chunk light tuna, you literally have about one third the amount of heavy metals that you would get from the albacore. Okay, the last fish that I want you to stay away from is tilapia, and I've done the video on tilapia, so I'm not gonna go into exquisite detail about tilapia. But here's the thing, tilapia is all farmed. It's not wild, okay? So all the farmed tilapia is coming from other countries that don't pay attention to quality standards. Tilapia can literally live off of feces. Remind me later to show you a link about this whole self-sustained ecosystem where there were literally chickens that were defecating into a pool of water that tilapia could eat and survive off of, and then they would continue to feed the tilapia to the chicken. The chicken would consume the tilapia, and then again, defecate where the tilapia would continue to eat it, and it was just a self-contained ecosystem. It shows you that tilapia can live off of just about anything, very low nutrient density, so you want to avoid that tilapia at all costs. So there you have it. The three fish that I think you should pay attention to the most right now, and the three fish that you should absolutely X off of that grocery list. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Please, please, please comment below and let me know what you think of this video and let me know what videos you wanna see in the future. See you soon.